The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 49. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all you that dwell in the world. You of low or high degree, both rich and poor together, my mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable, I will unfold my riddle with the lyre. Why should I fear in evil days, when the malice of my foes surrounds me, such as trust in their goods and glory in the abundance of their riches? For no one can indeed ransom another to pay to God the price of deliverance. To ransom a soul is too costly. There is no price one could pay for it, so that they might live forever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, with the foolish and the ignorant they perish, and leave their riches to others. Their tomb is their own forever, their dwelling place through all generations. Though they call their lands after their own names, those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who boast in themselves, the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep they are destined to die, death is their shepherd. They go down straight to the pit, their beauty shall waste away, and the land of the dead shall be their dwelling. But God shall ransom my soul, from the grasp of death will he take me. Be not afraid if some go rich, and the glory of their house increases. For they will carry nothing away when they die, nor will their glory follow after them. They count themselves happy while they live, and praise you for, their success, for your success. They shall enter the company of their ancestors, who will never more see the light. Those who have honour, but lack understanding, are like the beasts of the field that perish. This, in this psalm, the psalmist encourages us to think on what's really important. Some people get rich, some people get famous, but when they die, all of those things are worth nothing. It's more important that we are those who serve the Lord so that God will ransom our soul from the grasp of death. We spend our life, which is temporary, working for that which is everlasting and eternal. There's no amount of money in the world that can ransom a soul so that someone might live and never die. Only God can ransom our soul and he's done so in Christ Jesus our Lord. We praise him today. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 through to the first verse of chapter 11. So know, O Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Only to fear the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways, to love and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his decrees that I am commanding you today for your own well-being. Although heaven and the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord your God, the earth with all that is in it, Yet the Lord has set his heart in love on your ancestors alone and chose you, their descendants after them, out of all the peoples as it is today. Circumcise then the foreskin of your heart and do not be stubborn any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and the Lord of hosts, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who, execute, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, who loves the strangers, providing them with food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, him alone shall you worship. To him you will hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise, he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. Your ancestors went down to Egypt seventy persons, and now the Lord has made you as numerous as the stars in the sky. You shall love the Lord your God, therefore, and keep his charge, his decrees, his ordinances, and his commandments forever. 
just one phrase in this um, to think about fear fear God keep his commandments why for your own well-being God commanded the people of Israel commandments and laws that would keep them happy and content in the situation in which they found themselves for example the eating of shellfish when you live in the desert many miles from the sea is a bad idea so that was a forbidden food it was for their own well-being um, and when God commands things in our life today he doesn't command them for arbitrary or miserable fun smiling reasons he com brings commands into our life he brings his law into our hearts that we might serve him uh, but also that we might have a fulfilled and satisfied life the commandments of god are for our own well-being acts chapter 23 verses 12 to 35 remember in this passage we're uh, following on sunday on sundays we're following the story of paul um, uh, he's been uh, arrested by the uh, by the the, the romans uh, mostly is in protective custody to protect him from the jews so in the morning the jews joined in a conspiracy and bound themselves by oath neither to eat nor drink until they had killed paul there were more than 40 who joined in this conspiracy they went to the chief priests and elders and said we have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we have killed paul now then you and the council must notify the tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make a more thorough examination of his case and we are ready to do away with him before he arrives now the son of paul's sister heard about the ambush so he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told paul paul called one of the centurions and said take this young man to the tribune for he has something to report to so he took him and brought him to the tribune and said the prisoner paul has called me and asked me to bring this young man to you he has something to tell you the tribune took him by the hand drew him aside privately and asked what is it that you have to report to me he answered the jews have agreed to ask you to bring paul down to the council tomorrow as though they were going to inquire more thoroughly into his case but do not be persuaded by them for more than 40 of their men are lying in ambush for him they have bound themselves by oath neither to eat nor drink until they kill him and they are ready now and waiting for your consent so the tribune dismissed the young man ordering him tell no one that you have informed me of this then he summoned two centurions and said get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for caesarea with 200 soldiers 70 oarsmen and 200 spearmen also provide mounts for paul to ride and take him safely to felix the governor and he wrote a letter to this effect claudius lysis to his excellency the governor felix greetings this man was seized by the jews and was about to be killed by them but when i heard that he was a roman citizen i came with the guard and rescued him since i wanted to know the charge for which they accused him i brought him to their council i found out that he was being accused according to questions of their own law but was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment when i was informed that there would be a plot against the man I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers to state before you whatever they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him during the night to Antipas. And the next day they let, they let the horsemen go on with them, while they returned to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he belonged to when he learned he was from Sicilia he said I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive then he ordered that he be kept under guard in Herod's headquarters so here Paul is uh, after all his troubles the his enemies have joined in a plot 40 of them have uh, arranged to kill him to ambush him um, but Paul's nephew hears about it and warns him so Paul is able to escape um, it, in this passage we see the unfolding plan of God for Paul to speak in front of the emperor at some point um, and to speak in front of kings the thing that God had promised uh, to Paul at the time of his conversion 
we see the gradually unfolding of that. God's plans in our life unfold slowly. They unfold in ways that we can't see where they're going. Um, but God nevertheless is working out his purposes in our lives. Lord, we lift up this day and Lord, we lift up your church around the world. Lord, we pray that the message of the gospel will be preached clearly, uh, that Lord, your people may be strengthened in their faith and able to walk effectively before you. So Lord, we lift up to you those who will minister today in churches around the world and pray, Lord, for the power of your spirit to move amongst your people. In Jesus' name, amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.